he plugged this course three times. I haven't watched this video. Coding with Sergeant Taylor on these three things. I have it written down here. One of these are going to be there. It's either going to be debugging, communication, or reading documentation. Tech with Tim, welcome back to the show. Hope you have a good time. I guarantee you that until you learn these three things, you will struggle to write code. That's a guarantee. I enjoy it. I am strapped in. Once you learn them, coding will genuinely seem effortless. Effortless, hot diggity dog. Now, the first of these three things is syntax and program structure. Okay, so syntax and program structure. I am 0 for 3. Remember, we're going for debugging, communication, and reading documentation. We're 0 for 3. You need to understand how your language works. You need to have the fundamentals down. You need to know how to write basic code. Okay, so coding was hard until you learned the basic of code. Now, many of you already know how to do that. It's relatively easy to learn these skills in just a few weeks. For example, pick up functions, pick up if statements, variables. You guys know what I'm talking about here, and I'm sure you followed many online tutorials or even premium courses like my brand new software development course. <laughs> I knew it, bro. I actually knew it. I, this shit always happened. It is literally clock clockwork, dude. Now, once you learn syntax, where many of you will struggle and kind of get stuck is program structure. Solving small problems with those tools that you have. Where it becomes more difficult is when you want to take on a larger task that's not well-defined. Now, I can't teach you that in this short video, but what I can recommend you do is follow along with other experienced programmers. It's all him. Large other experienced programmers? just him even going to some github repositories and viewing code that is written by experienced programmers you could for example check out my github repository or you could of course join some more premium courses like my software development course dude another plug on his software developer course bro relax man you don't need two plugs on your course this is why your channel is fucking dying dude you're trying to get people who are vulnerable to buy your course and you're using your platform to just shove it down their throat which i'll leave a link to in the description that has an entire section specifically on structuring code and writing it in a clean organized manner now, the next thing you need to look at is debugging. Oh if my God, I called that. I actually called that. I've watched enough of these where they always talk about debugging, man. It's like, we get it, dude. But like coding was hard until I learned these three things. How do you code without debugging? If you can be a good debugger, effective, and not get frustrated when you run into an issue, you're really going to see yourself advance a lot as a developer or a programmer, and you're going to be able to make a lot more progress a lot faster. Now, I want to share with you a few small piece of advice that can make debugging easier. This. Overall, like, yeah, I think debugging is important. I think we can agree to this, right? Debugging is important, but it's almost like a no shit Sherlock piece of advice. It's like telling a swimmer, oh, to be really good at swimming, you have to make sure that while you swim, you get air and then go back to swimming. It's like just doing the action requires this. So this isn't anything breaking. This isn't like a novel piece of advice. This is like when you code, you're going to get errors. You're going to have to find how to solve those errors. I want to see what this piece of advice is. First, when you are debugging, the mindset you should adopt is what you are really trying to do is isolate the problem to the smallest area of the code you possibly can. Now, it's hard to give you a specific example of this, but what you really want to do here is try to disable as many things as possible in the code so you can narrow down where exactly you're running into a specific issue. There's a bunch of different areas. So immediately you want to start isolating what area that would be in, right? So you'd want to first go, for example, and maybe check the back end and say, okay, let me look at this in isolation when it's not attached. Okay, first of all, there's stack error traces that could literally tell you the line where your problem is. You could literally just be like, oh, it's line 15 on this JSX file. Okay, why is this an error? And then you probably just work backwards from that. I've never seen a problem where you have an error and you don't know if it's from the front end or the back end. The isolating problem, yeah, you definitely want to isolate, but like the, this trace does this for you, man. You just look at it, be like, oh, okay, like literally it's not submitting. Milky, well, sometimes I don't get a stack trace because my function's not even doing what it is okay where are you calling that function are you actually calling it if you're pressing the submit button what happens when you submit it like i always, every time i implement like a uh, button call to action i literally always do a console log patch to this form and see if this works as i anticipate it working now, if that does work, you've just crossed off a whole large section of code that you don't need to look at for the potential issue. 
Now, maybe you go into the JavaScript code and you say, okay, let's check to make sure I'm collecting the form. I would actually argue this is like improper error hand, like debugging. I would actually say this is like what beginners do. I'm not even, I'm not trying to be mean. This type of like, I don't even know where to start. Let me just check the back end and then like, maybe it's there, maybe it's not. Then check the front end. Like that's actually like inefficient debugging. I would actually argue, don't do this. If you actually can't trace your bug, start there. Do better error handling and logging. That's where you start. You figure out where the cause is based on your logs and your error handling and then you go there that's it form elements properly it's impossible to analyze you know thousands upon thousands of lines of code you need to first cross off as many areas as you can isolate and get into the smallest part how many times and then you isolated? can go through and do a more thorough dissection of where the actual bug lies now to be able to do this it's going to be helpful to know how to use professional debugging tools like the debugger that might exist inside of something like vs code so i recommend spend 15 or 20 minutes learn how to use the debugger i promise you it's not actually that complicated and it can help you a lot to do what i just said isolate the problem now, beyond that, once you figure out, by the way, the best debugging tool is console log or print statement, sue me, where relatively the problem is, you can use something known as the rubber ducky technique. Once you've learned all that, the next thing that's really going to help you get better at programming is understanding how to plan before you code. Now, one thing that I've been planning for a very long time is actually my new software developing course in he plugged this fucking course three times. He literally, I'm okay. No, no, no. Somebody write 641 right now. Okay. The first plug. And I'm sure you followed many first online plug. tutorials Hold on. or even premium courses like my brand new software development. Plug number one, 40 seconds in. I don't have too much of a problem with this. Okay. It's kind of early. It's you have a course that helps. I I don't like it, course, which will leave but whatever. Alone. Okay. Next plug. By experienced programmers, you could, for example, check out my GitHub repository, or, or you could of course join some more pre you can check out my premium course at 242 23 so we're three minutes into this 10 minute video and i've been plugged two times for your course and then we go all the way to 641 that coding is already hard writing code and solving small problems is already a difficult thing to do what makes it significantly more difficult is when you need to break a task down into smaller tasks and figure out what you're going to be doing while you're writing code which is actually the way most people end up doing things what you should be doing instead is spending a bit of time before you write any code and breaking your problem down into uh, i'm done i can't i actually can't watch this dude i like the third ad killed it just made me like to test this video to to a level i can't even like fathom uh literally this is the thing is man this is why i'm going on the attack on these creators this is why i got i'm gonna call this shit out dude and we're gonna see these individuals who make this type of content that's just not that quality please don't watch this kinds of videos oh the description registered for my free software development course where i teach you how to land a software developer job making over eighty thousand a year uh that's it thank you for watching buy my course